What's up guys, welcome back. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna be doing a Q&A all about the big move to Australia. I know a lot of you have been curious as to why we left the Phuket and why we moved in with our in-laws in Melbourne. So grab a snack, get cozy, and let's dive into today's Q&A. But before we do, hit the subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy it. So why did we move? Well, this is a loaded question. To put it simply, Thailand was just too incredible. I know. Let me explain. In late 2021, I went through a quarter life crisis. I quit my job, packed up my family, and we abruptly moved to Thailand. And over the next year, I was just focused on finding myself in my 30s, figuring out the direction I wanted my life to take. And I dabbled into the life of a content creator. And I did it for six months, I really enjoyed it, and decided to commit 100% to the content creator life. And a year later, my husband decided he wanted to join the party and become an entrepreneur and a content creator himself. And for the last 18 months, he's been supporting our family with his nine to five job, working remotely for a US company while living in Thailand. So now he wants to get rid of his job and just fully commit to being an entrepreneur. So to answer your question, we're moving because we want to give ourselves a chance to reinvent our lives, start a new career, embrace entrepreneurship, and just create a fresh lifestyle. And doing that in Thailand, that's really tough because living in Thailand was just too amazing. It was practically paradise. And at this very stage of our lives, we don't need paradise. We need to be in that hustle and grind mode because as early stage entrepreneurs, we need to learn. We need to build and just really put ourselves into deep work. And Thailand was not the environment for that. There are just way too many distractions. Perfect weather, amazing sunsets, affordable food. And we had this huge community of friends. And it was, just, it was too hard. You see, most people believe that in order for you to build a successful company or to achieve any sort of success, you need more time. But the truth is, we don't need more time. We just need less distractions, fewer distractions. I thought that Thailand was going to be the perfect place for me to immerse myself into deep work. But I had the exact opposite. I ended up going out every weekend and on the weekdays. My calendar was always full. Barbecues, beach dates, kids parties, boat parties, you name it, I was there. And as a result, my business wasn't where I wanted to be. So I knew I had to remove myself from that environment and put myself in a place where I'd actually want to work. My philosophy is if you want to change your life, you change your environment. It's that simple. So I want to put myself in an environment where I'd feel uncomfortable, but motivated to work and push myself. And what's more uncomfortable than living with your in-laws? Think about it. I'm living in a house that isn't mine. The space is limited. I have no control over the decor and I just don't feel relaxed in any way. This means that I'm highly motivated to leave this space as soon as possible. But in order for me to do that, I told myself I needed to generate reoccurring revenue for my business. I want to build something sustainable with money coming in consistently every single month. I'm not leaving Australia until we're able to do that. So that's why we're here. So why Australia? Well, Dimitri, my husband, was born in Russia, but he lived in Australia since he was 13 years old. His mom, his brother, and his stepdad still live here. And they are the reason why we are moving here. One, lower cost of living. So we'll be living with my in-laws, which means that we're not gonna pay any rent. This saves us $2,500 a month. That was how much we we're paying for a six bedroom villa in Thailand. We'll also be cutting out private school tuition, which is about $2,000 for two kids. We were paying a lot of money for international schools for the kids in Thailand. Here at the will attend public school in a very nice affluent suburbs where my in-laws live and Levi were putting him in kindergarten for three days a week. The Australian government provides two free daycare days for all of their citizens. So we have to pay out of pocket for one extra day, which is amazing. <laughs> and honestly, we also get to eliminate the cost of a nanny, a cleaner, and a cook. We were paying about $1,200 a month in Thailand for a full-time nanny and a part-time cook and a cleaner. And, and here in Australia, my mother-in-law is retired, so she's going to be watching Levi for two days a week while we work. And 
we also have them on the weekends and nights if we need to enjoy a day night and i don't know honestly the best part of living here is i get to give my kids something that i never had grown up and that's grandparents they'll get to spend an entire year getting to know their grandma and their grandpa and this is an experience they'll treasure forever so i think that's probably more valuable than anything else and another reason we wanted to live in australia well it's a little bit selfish it's all about me i want my australian citizenship you see dimitri has both an australian and a russian passport and a u.s green card while i only have a u.s passport so by living in australia for at least one year i can apply for permanent residency this pretty much serves as an insurance policy because after that i can apply for an australian citizenship so if the u.s economy ever collapse or i simply want to live in another country i'll have that option and the last reason is really cultural exposure for our kids so dimitri has always wanted our kids to enjoy and experience the australian culture it's something we discussed before we even got married we agreed to expose our children to chinese russian australian and american cultures and they've already lived in the u.s for a few years so now it's time to discover their aussie side do you have an expected timeline for how long you'll stay in australia Oh, it's a hard question. We're planning to stay in Australia for at least one year to start. Dimitri is still working his nine to five job, but he's quitting in July. So in July, we'll both be completely unemployed. This gives us three months to save up some money since we will have rent, school tuition, nanny, cook, or cleaner salary. This year will also give Dimitri some time to start working on some of his few projects. We're hoping to stay in Australia, maybe max of two years, I don't really know. I might love it. We might hate it. We'll just see how it goes. But right now, one year to start. What will housing be like? Well, we're living with my in-laws and we're living here rent-free. As you can see, this house is pretty spacious. I'm in one of the dens here. They have four bedroom, a den upstairs and an office downstairs as well. We'll occupy three of those rooms. So Dimitri and I will share a room, the kids will share a room, and we also have a shared office. We'll be contributing to food, utilities, and other household expenses. And we're hoping to keep our budget under $2,000 a month. In Thailand, we we're living off, I think like $6,000 a month, um, and that's a lot. And let's be honest, nobody really wants to live in somebody else's home for an extended period. I love my in-laws, they're great people. I don't think I've ever gotten any major fights or had any drama with them. And I don't really expect us to have any drama living together. But again, I still don't want to live here for too long. And I'm sure they feel the same that if I was here the entire time. So ideally, we wanted to get our business off the ground, establish some recurring revenue and get out of here. But we're really going to enjoy this time and make the most of this Aussie life. And as for all the visa information, so the boys are Australian citizens, so they don't need a visa, which is great. As for me, I'm on a tourist visa right now for three months. I think you're allowed to extend it for six months and it's pretty simple. The visas are pretty cheap and it's not really a problem, but after six months, it becomes problematic. So then I will have to apply for a spousal visa for one year and then apply for my permanent residence card. And then after that, I think two years later, I can apply for an actual citizenship. But I really haven't done the research. I should probably do that very soon. So thanks for the reminder. How's the food? Well, Melbourne is a big city and it is known for being a major foodie town. It's like a blend of San Francisco and Boston, but much bigger. And there's all sorts of food here, with my favorite being Asian cuisine. And there's no shortage of Chinese, and Vietnamese, Thai, Korean, Japanese, and Indian food. And that's the best, best part of living here. And it's a big change for Phuket because Phuket is a small island and there really isn't a variety of food so i got really boring eating the same five restaurants all the time how far are you from the beach well we're about 10 minutes from the nearest beach but now the beaches here aren't like the ones in thailand this is a city beach think san francisco beach it's not super blue or turquoise with white sandy shore it's nothing like that it's just a regular nothing spectacular beach but it's still a beach and it's nice, um, but there are definitely better beaches in Sydney and other parts of Australia. But Melbourne, they're just really not known to have the best beaches. All right, guys, thanks for watching and thank you for following our journey. That is all I have for you today. If you have any questions about living abroad or 
what it's like to be here in Melbourne, drop a comment below. I would love to hear from you. And if you never considered living abroad, I highly urge you to do so. It's going to change your life. Until next time, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.